I, I'm just going to make this video, honestly, I feel like most of this video is going to be mostly just me venting, and actually, when I think deeply about it, it's just more, I mean, the fact that I have, I feel like I have to turn to a video to talk about this, um, at some point, you just get tired of feeling alone. You know, I've been on my walk with Christ for a while now, and, you know, I feel lonely. I uh, met a lot of people, most of them who don't live in my city. The rest of them are in completely different age groups. We, we really don't have anything in common, honestly. Um, it's hard, you know, trying to be a man of God. Or a child of God, for the women listening to, in a major city like Atlanta, where this is Sin City for real. Like, this is, it's easier to find those kind of people than it is to find people like us. And, and then, to find people beyond fellowship. Someone to go bowling with, someone to go, you know, maybe check out a movie with or go to the park with. These things are not easy to find. It's a very lonely life, you know, and I ain't never going to just feel like, well, it was more fun over there. I'm going to go back over there or, or even like, uh, you know, feel like, um, whatever, uh, my Holy Spirit ain't good enough, but at the end of the day, there was once a time on this planet where God was coming down and he even gave those people human beings. Jesus Christ could have did everything by himself and he had 12 people with him. You know, God would come and talk to Adam every day and even he gave him Eve. So don't ever think that like as Christian people, we're supposed to be alone. Don't ever let no none of these don't let none of these pastors tell you that. Don't let none of these YouTubers, none of them tell you that. That is a lie. That is a lie. You might have to go through a season of isolation so God can work on you. But you're not, don't ever think that we're just supposed to be alone and not have nobody to fit in with. Nobody that we can, okay, this is my friend. This is someone I can call on. That's a lie. Dating, platonic, just sucks out here, man. But you want to know something, man? The devil been trying to... Not the devil himself, because the devil is not omnipresent. And I doubt that Satan... You know, I think I think we give him a little too much credit. It's, it's other spirits been trying to tell me, like, oh, look, you know, and I, I ain't gonna lie, I've been, I've been falling for it in the last week. You know, oh, look, man, look, since you've been a Christian, you ain't got no nobody you really even feel comfortable being around. You ain't got nobody to call on, really. Like, you ain't got... And it's just like, when I was over there kicking it with y'all, it was nobody over there. I ain't fitting with them either. I always been too black, too too white, uh, too whatever, man, for people. I'm tired of feeling lonely. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm sick and tired of it. You know, it's 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 frustrating. Now, give me a second, because it's going to get hot, but I came and sat in the car. Get a little breeze going up, yeah, up in here. Like, I'm I'm cool. I like to do all kinds of stuff, man. I like paintball, work out, read, go jogging. But then, I, and I meet people, and I, I don't want to sound ungrateful. I do meet people. I feel like naturally, just the type of person that I am, I'm like mostly introvert, but I'm expressive. I meet people, but then it just be like, it. I ain't gonna lie, like, I don't like being around people who cuss a lot, like these days. Like it just, it's always kind of bothered my spirit, even when I used to cuss a lot for crying out loud I, I just for some reason and not to be a hypocrite about it but just you know it's, it's gonna be a difference hearing things versus saying things like and just like i meet somebody and it's like okay this guy works out like i work out 
and every other word is the S word, and man, I'm finna go get my dingling and sorry, y'all, but you know, just just keeping it raw. You're gonna go get this licked on, and it's like, bro, come on, man, why you had to say that? Like, now I don't feel like I want to really be around you, and I'll I'll try to witness to them or whatever like that. Or at this point, it's just like I just don't. Ultimately, man, I just don't fit in with nobody. I can't really kick it with the, as y'all would call them, the worldly people. Even though I was once a part of that, and that wasn't that long ago, you know what I'm saying? I can't really. Some of my old friends, I just have to love them from a distance. You know, I'm still a baby in my walk, so it's just like I don't want to be around certain things. And I mean, I know I won't do them. And I know that for a fact because it's not like I'm forcing myself out of duty of my godly duties to not do these things. I genuinely don't want to do these things. But I don't want to be around it either. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with not wanting to be around certain stuff. They get it when they when they don't want to be around uh, certain looking girls or certain looking guys. Or they don't want to hang out with dudes from this neighborhood or it's the same thing. It's like, I just don't want to be around it. I don't feel like I have to. And it's like, it's uh, maybe this is what single mothers feel like. Like, they don't want to be single mothers, but it's like, I'm not going to just date any guy either, right? It's almost kind of how I feel. Like, but, I mean, not obviously, I'm not a single mom and I'm not dating men, but just, you know, it's like, I don't want to, but I'm not going to just jump out there and just go be friends with just anybody. That's how I ended up in the world. You know, I didn't really get much affection growing up. I didn't really get these things. I turn to whoever could give me a dap, who give me a hug, who give me a kiss on my cheek, and if that was gangs, if that was uh, people that was living all kind of different lifestyles or doing whatever they was doing, then hey, what's up? I'm cool. Let me in, like, and they wanted me in. I, for some reason, everywhere I go, and this is this is this this is very depressing, actually. There's people want to talk to me for the most part. I mean, well, when I say everywhere I go, I don't mean like every room I go into, but in every realm or culture I go around. But it's just all these motives. I go around Christian, especially like Christian people. Like, I'm going to just say it for what it is, like Christian, like white people. And I sometimes feel like not all of them, don't get twisted, not all of them. Like when I was in Panama City, I feel like that was a little a little different as far as people I was actually around. But some of the outer people I met outside of the, my inner circle in Panama City, I feel this way too. Up here in Georgia, I feel the same way too. Like I'm the token black guy. Like, oh, here's a black guy with the street stories that's been to jail and stuff. And it's just like, okay, this is cool, but you know, who am I going to call? Like, you think I want to sit up here and do this all day? Like, at some point, don't anybody want to go canoeing or something? Like, but uh, I'm not, I'm cool enough for you to wave around in your church or wave around to your friends. Like, look at the token black guy with the black story who gave his life to Christ and hangs out with us good white people and Spanish people. But am I, I'm not, I'm also not welcome enough to come and kick it with you, though, huh? When y'all out doing other things, like going out and having dinner nights and game nights and stuff like that. I, I can't come to that, though. And truth be told, do I really want to go to that? Do I, am I going to, I'm going to feel out of place. These people have a certain, people, people don't like to look at race and culture, but it's just true. Cultures breed different personalities and these things sometimes don't always mix and blend well. They can only mix and blend well, but for so long, a guy like me and a group full of white guys who grew up around white people who grew up a certain way. I have to give up a lot of myself if I want to fit in with them. They can't try to fit in with me. I'm the outsider. I have to try to somewhat, uh, I don't even know if this is the right word to say, but I guess subjugate, I don't know, to conform, that's a better word, to what they got going on. And it's just this culture clash, Christian or not. It's always been that way, you know? And then black people, I don't even know where to start with black people. Can't really be around them because they too wishy-washy. Backsliding is a daily priority for them. Y'all want me to, you want me to lie to you? You think I'm going to make this video to sit up here and lie to you? You know? Uh, 
you know what's going on between black men and black women. The whole world knows what's going on between black men and black women right now. That ten- that tension that's there can't even have a platonic conversation with, with them without, without them just assuming that something else is going to come from it. Like, no, ma'am, I'm just here to talk to you like I would talk to this, this white girl over here. She would just talk to me and there would never be no nothing weird coming from it. But we don't have platonic interactions in the black community. So then I have to then disregard race, right? Then I'm looking at, okay, generally, all right, fine, okay, forget the whole black-white thing. Because I grew up in a diverse area. I grew up actually in a predominantly white area with a big sprinkle of blacks and Spanish, but it was ultimately mostly white, right, up in Cobb County. And then my dad lived in DeKalb County, South DeKalb and Stone Mountain, Tucker area. So going back and forth every week, literally every week, every week, that's my life, right? A lot of y'all could probably understand that. It's a different generation for black kids like me because we didn't, when I say all of us, but a lot of us didn't grow up just hood or just good. It was like this kind of weird combination of both, which really confused the life out of us. Because when we became adults, it was like, do I go hang out with these kids that I go fishing and drink beers with? And mind you, just me speaking like, mind, I just, you know, so, or do I go hang out with these kids who like to post up and do all this stuff? And it's just like, uh, forget both of y'all. Because you got too much going on and you don't got enough going on for me. So I then I'm then I'm stuck in the middle, right? Then when you become a Christian and you really become serious about it. And I use the word Christian loosely, not because I'm a loose Christian or I'm lukewarm, but simply because I don't want to get too many people stuck on that word and they don't hear what I'm saying. Just believe and understand that I'm a follower of Christ. The whole religious side of it, we'll leave that for another conversation for another time. I don't know when this phone's going to go off. When the uh, it's not dying, but I don't know when the my memory's going to say you've exceeded. This is Android phone. I've been praying for iPhone now. I went. I went to the store. I've been putting in the work too. I ain't been just praying and not putting the work, man. I went to the store. I need the iPhone. I really do because I need to start making these videos. I don't have to keep going through all these different things to make these videos. So like, because right now this is my best friend. (laughs) <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm telling you. This is besides the Holy Spirit and talking to Jesus and God all day. This is literally my best friend. This is the only thing that doesn't turn on me that I don't have to worry about polluting my mind or, or cursing or trying to talk to me about sex or anything crazy. Because I already still struggle with lustful ways. That's my biggest struggle right now. That and and I do catch myself getting angry and and falling into feeling bad about my life. And just questioning everything, I guess, which is kind of essentially what I'm doing right now. But I feel lonely. All my friends that I do have are gone. And this is why yeah, any young people listening to me, get you a family while you're young. Don't forget all that stuff, man. Get you a family while you're young. In case you don't got to be sitting here making a video on YouTube at 29 years old. Like while all your while some of your friends are out with their husbands and wives right now. And then the other ones live in Florida and the other ones live in New York and this one's in Arkansas and this one's in China and Beirut. Like get you a family so you you don't have to feel all lonely like I feel. Okay, like trust me, like there's nothing in this world for you. There's let me tell you two things. There's nothing in the world but misery and loneliness, disappointment and shame, lies and more lies and ultimately death. That's a separation from you and Christ. I'm, I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. And these things will linger into anything you go into. I promise you they will. All right. Second thing, there ain't nothing. There is nothing. More than likely, there is nothing good in the world once the sun goes down. Go home. Okay. Unless you're working or something like that. If you have a choice, find you something legal to do. Find you something good to do, positive to do. There is nothing on them streets. out. I don't care if you live in the suburbs, the hood, the city, the country. There is nothing outside after 10 o'clock at night. Go home. Anyways. Just that feeling, man. It's almost like, is there is there nobody? Can't even sit up there and start thinking about dating or anything like that. With this new generation of women who claim they don't need men and and they look at masculinity like a threat and competition and we're not even gonna go into that conversation because if you know me outside of this YouTube channel, you know I can go into that conversation and we can we can sit and dwell in that in ways that I promise you none of your little red pill or manosphere people have even put it. I'm telling you, you don't want to go into that conversation. 
I'm talking about a general sense of loneliness to the point where, let me tell you something about loneliness. Loneliness does not always have to be a lack of people in your life. You can have people. I live with people. I go out every day and see people. I got people, somebody probably just texted my phone like, what, 10 minutes ago? Y'all heard it vibrate. That's the worst loneliness that you could probably ever experience is when you have people and you still feel like you don't got nobody. That's lonely. And it's not about being a big baby and being picky. It's not that. Because clearly, if I'm living with people, if I'm having someone text my phone, whatever, if I'm still going out uh, with a few friends every now and then, the ones that are at least decently clean, because I can't seem to find Christian friends to save my life, none that live here, right? Then, obviously, there's people. But these people are fickle. You know that, but that's the world. That's humans. Humans are fickle. I mean, we turned on God. Let me think we're going to be loyal to people. <laughs> if we can't be loyal to God, if we can't be loyal to a few rules that help us, like these rules aren't just there to make us like, man, we can't have sex before marriage. What is sex before marriage? Do I just, bro, I just talked to somebody who's going through problems with their baby father. You know, like what does sex before marriage do? These things don't help us. What does stealing do? What does lying do? Lying leads to a life that is a lie. It sucks being lonely, man. I didn't, I didn't, in the last couple of months alone, I've cried every tear I think that my body could produce. I've cried more in the last, uh, in the last like six months than I've probably ever cried in my whole entire life. This transformation process is not for the weak. I'm telling you, like, it's hard, man. It is so hard. It's easy to be a sinner because the world is shaped for you at this point. It's shaped. It's literally, what? We got a strip club. You got the mall, man. You got Bentleys, Rolls Royces, designer clothes. Man, diamonds, rap music. Rap music at the main music. Every movie. They got Netflix full of movies for you to watch. Stars. Hulu is full of content for you to watch. You know what I have to watch these days when I'm not watching Christian content and I need a, a break just to watch something regular? I got to go watch Toy Story or something like that. Yeah, my grown... I was just at someone's house watching Fairly Odd Parents. I was at their house watching the Fairly Odd Parents. And I almost turned it off when I started thinking about it. I'm like, wait, this is some witchcraft. But then I started watching the episode... And it, it, it brought a lesson to me, you know, and I, maybe I'll make a, a video about what that lesson in that episode was. It was season three, episode one, the first episode on season three and how basically Timmy didn't want his parents to love him no more. He wanted his parents to stop caring because they was all trying to give him vegetables and not let him watch violent TV. And they finally was he got the wish, you know, he got an odd parent. So he wished I don't want my parents to love me anymore. So they stopped caring about him. And then he grew a beard, he started having body odor, his the grass in the front yard wasn't cut. And I was like, that's exactly how it is when we turn against God, man. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be angling, I'd be, I'd be chilling, watching regular stuff, finding like lessons about God. And I'd be like, oh, see, if he didn't fornicate, he went, oh, I'd be watching regular stuff, bro. And just like, I'd turn it into church. Like, because, bro, it's like, after I sat there, I watched that one show, Greenleaf. I don't know where to go, man. I don't know, man. I, I, I didn't find God through people. I found God alone. And it's like, I guess, just being alone while walking with him. I found God in a jail cell and I found God by myself. And then I found God with some people at Panama City. And God bless those people, Mike, Rochelle, you know, Daniel, Suzanne, Josh. All these people live in different places. I don't live there. I can't just go to Panama City right, right now. I really, I mean, it. I just, you know... It's not that I don't want to. If I could, I'd leave. Literally, I'll be driving there making this video. But I just literally have like legal obligations I still have to deal with from my past or whatever that I'm having to deal with that are here, right? So it's just like in the city of Atlanta where everybody's let's call it what it is. Everybody's gay. You can't even be friends with these dudes. Next thing you know, for real, brother. You know, you, everybody's gay. Everybody is trying to have sex. Everybody is trying to get high. Everybody's running from their problems. Everybody's listening to this to this bad music. Everybody's just half naked. All the girls are have attitude. Uh, and then, then you have the white people. The Mexicans don't like us. The white people are cool, but once again, there's that culture barrier where it's just like, 
it just gets awkward. I'm just going to call it what it is. And I love white people. White people have always been very nice to me. They wave at me. They smile at me. A very kind group of people. Even when they're racist, they're still nice to you. Unlike black people, they aren't always nice to you unless they know you or want something from you. Most For the most part, right? Because I could say, well, then somebody could say it about me. So it's not true. Obviously, I know good black people. But it is just this push and pull. And it's like I was I commented on Mark the Messenger. You to check out his channel, Mark the Messenger's video. And I, he said that he don't have no friends. I said, man, it feels like if I don't settle to hang out with people who may not be of God, like they're not full Christians or whatever like that, but they don't do too much bad things either. Then I don't really have many friends, bro. You know what I'm saying? When you go to the black church, there don't be nobody in there in their 20s. All these grown how you doing, young brother? Like, okay, cool. This is cool today. I don't I don't think I'd really want to hang out with him like that, though. I don't think he'd want to hang out with me. We can hang out only but oh so much. He'd be a great associate. That's it. Friendship. I know that sounds childish. Like, I ain't grow up, man. You want friends? Friends? Yeah, I want friends. So what? Friends? Some people? A, a wife? Something? Dang. It's like, I feel like I don't have nobody, man. And then you go around people and they're doing the most and you feel like you have to leave. You have to leave, you know. Uh, and you don't want to judge them, but you got to tell them how you feel, too, though, because it's like, hey, man, that's not right. Then you go over here. It sucks, man. It sucks, bro. Sometimes and I have posted this. Sometimes I'll be like, man, I really hope that this rapture comes soon. It's like, I'm not suicidal, but sometimes I'll just be like, God, if you ain't got nothing else for me to really do here, just go ahead and just, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to do it, but you can do it. Like, I'll be really feeling like that because it's, 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 you don't think Adam was ever tired? Who cares? You don't think Adam was ever sleepy or something like that, maybe? It was when God saw he was, he didn't even know it. God saw he was lonely and he gave him Eve. We can't even turn to women no more. They're not even touching their emotions. Platonically, romantically, these women are like shot out these days. Like it's like talking to like a 